says crafting is a dying art? I'm finding crafters all over the Middle Tennessee area who make unique items that will be passed down for generations to come. Welcome to Handmade Tennessee. I'm Kimberly Vance with my special guest today, Patty Boyd. Hi, Patty. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really yeah. appreciate it. You're welcome. Now, you have something that I'll be honest with you. I don't even know anybody now anymore who does this, and it's smocking. And you talking about something else. I've got cold chills just thinking about it. This is a, a, a time-honored sewing tradition. Did anybody in your family do this? Is that where you picked up on it? No, not to my knowledge. Um, I wanted to smock when I had a little girl. Oh. She was about two years old. And uh, I would see all the, the fancy dresses and mm -hmm. want those, but they were very expensive. Very. And, and I just really wanted to make those myself. And yeah. so I found a shop. We were living in Tullahoma at the time that sold the supplies and uh, the books that uh, teach it. And they did teach classes, but I, I didn't take a class. I just bought the book. And didn't you say the classes were very expensive? They were pretty expensive, and mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just decided I wanted to see if I could learn on my own. And uh, the Lo most and behold, you did <laughs> <laughs> the most so, economical way. <laughs> economical way, and uh, so I bought the book that they used in the class, and oh. and this is the book. It's uh, put out by the Children's Corner, which uh, coincidentally is in Nashville. Oh. So um, that's one of the places where I look to find my supplies sometimes, and uh, there's not anywhere locally that sells smocking supplies. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know when we were talking about it, you said it would take you a few mm -hmm. days because you had to go out of town and get the stuff. Yeah, which yeah. is unfortunate, but hopefully we'll get uh, you know some some folks back in here who can get us the supplies and stuff that we need. That would be that, wonderful. That would be great. I'd yeah. love that. And of course, the internet I assume is a good source for some things, but you wouldn't want to get a lot of your fabrics and stuff off. I don't assume. There are a few websites that I order things from, and there's a shop that's a. A little closer, it's in Smyrna now, mm -hmm. and it's a really good shop, Stitcher's Playhouse, and okay. and they'll ship to you, oh, and uh, so you can can call down there and order, or they have a Facebook page oh, and good. they have a website, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's a really good well, source for yeah. supplies, especially if you have felt their fabrics and you're familiar with their mm -hmm. product. Everything so. they have is top notch. It's Excellent. great. That's good. And really nice to, to deal with. Oh, Very good. helpful. That's nice. So. That always makes it a lot better, don't yeah. you? You have somebody pleasant to deal it with. It does. That. This book, this is so cute. I'll tell you though, the pictures look even earlier than the 80s. They look like mm -hmm. something you would see maybe from like, you know, the 50s, 60s, yeah. 70s, something like that. That's a neat book. All right, so you buy this book. You say, I'm going to teach myself how to do this. Goodness gracious, you must be book smart. <laughs> I can't no, believe it. It's, it's pretty easy. It, there's not a, a lot to it, really. Mm -hmm. It's just some very basic techniques. Uh, one of the first things um, that you should know is to buy good fabrics. If you're going to you know, take the time to make something handmade, mm -hmm. you need to buy good quality fabrics and lace. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, usually a light to medium weight fabric. I like to use Batiste or Pima Cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the economical fabrics to use is a, a fabric called Imperial Batiste. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good uh, quality and it washes up well and, mm. and doesn't require a lot of ironing. Now, when oh. you get into your Pima Cottons and your Swiss Batiste and that iron. kind of thing, you're looking at spending a lot of time with the iron. Uh, you so. know, I'll tell you what, and you can probably tell by looking at me, I don't even know where my iron's at. That's not my thing, <laughs> is ironing, till yeah. I have to. So, yeah, that's a, that's a very good, helpful tip right there. I noticed that pretty much all of your fabrics are, are quite similar. Mm -hmm. They are. These are all, uh, actually, they're all Imperial Batiste, except mm -hmm. um, one of the gowns back here, and this oh. one is made out of a Pima cotton, oh, which... So um, cute. Seems to me I, it was around $15 a yard uh -huh. for that fabric. And how much would you have in a garment like this? In this gown, I think there's just one yard. Just one yard. So that's not, not bad. Yeah. But, um, and. Oh, that is adorable. That's one that I put, uh, made for my grandma's hope chest. Aww. And uh, just hanging on to that for someday uh -huh. when I have more grandchildren. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> How many do you have now? I have two grandchildren oh. right now, Kirsten and Bailey. Oh, sweet. Uh -huh. And they have the uh, garments, or have ha are they a little older now? Yes, Kirsten's uh, 10 and Bailey's 8. So and it would be hard to get a bonnet on those children oh, probably, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> they, they've kind of outgrown my smocking, but I try to do other things uh -huh. for them. Oh, that's sweet. But. And like you say, uh, stocking up kind of for when you have more. Yes. You'll have some items yeah. prepared. So. All right, so what would you 
you say is the the basis of smocking? What what would you say if, if you had to describe smocking to someone? What, how would you do it? Uh, it's repetitive stitches. Mm -hmm. uh, the stitches whether where the thread is, whether it's above or below the needle, is mm. is what uh, dictates you know the the flow of the thread. Oh, and so different stitches require the thread to be you know either above or below the needle. Okay, and, and your instructions and normally tell you mm -hmm. what type of stitch, and then that would go along with above or below. You buy uh, what's called a smocking plate or a graph. Okay, and and you follow those instructions row by row. And there's some in this okay. book. Okay, that's what the patterns are. Uh, there's some um, in here, like mm -hmm. um, for the bonnet that uh -huh. we're going to do today. It shows the different rows. Uh, the first row is like a, a very simple basic stitch. It's a cable row. Mm -hmm. and, and then you go on to a trellis stitch. Mm -hmm. And that just, when your needle is traveling up mm -hmm. from one row to the next, it's when your needle's, needle's going up, the thread's below the needle. Okay. And when your needle is going, if you're trying to work downward on mm -hmm. the graph, then your thread's above the needle. Okay. And that, that helps you to remember you know, which way your thread needs to be. Oh, that's neat. Oh, that's something else. Now, would you say that this is a little bit akin to uh, like embroidering, just in it the slightest is. way? It is, and most people mm -hmm. that can embroider or cross stitch mm -hmm. uh, can pick this up very easily. Wow. It's very easy. All right, so we want to get started smocking. What supplies do we need? You need some fabric. Uh, to make a bonnet that we're gonna do today, um, you need eight inches of 45 inch wide fabric. Okay. And you tear the fabric um, so that it's on the grain. Okay. And, and then you pleat it. And okay. I've got uh, the eight inch piece of fabric rolled onto my, this dowel stick. Okay. And you thread the pleater. There's needles on this side of the pleater that the thread goes through and the fabric comes off of. I've got to say, I have so, never seen one of these before. I've never seen a pleater. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a hand crank device that puts the the threads in the fabric and the threads are your guide to where to sew. Okay. And once you're finished with your bonnet or your garment, whichever you're making, then you just pull those pleating threads out at oh. whatever point your instructions tell you to. Okay. So I'm going to thread this pleater just a little bit. All right. And I've already got part of it threaded. We'll and I see two it's got more. several needles in it. You what can, is the purpose of that? I'm going to flip it up just a pinch okay. here so we can see. But this uh, has several needles. This is a six, I don't have all 16 needles in, but it is a 16 row pleater. Uh -huh. And that's the most rows that you can pleat with this particular pleater. Okay. There are 24 row pleaters. Uh, this one is made by a company called Reed. There's a very good pleater on the market by Martha Pullen. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I just, this is the one that I bought years ago, and it's just the one that I've always used. Served you well. It has, and I've never felt the need to upgrade or anything, mm -hmm. so I just, I use this one. But uh, once your fabric, you want it on the dowel stick with it coming off towards you. Okay. And then you line it up um, with the next open, open needle okay. past where your threads are. You thread however many rows your pattern tells you to thread. Okay. And, and then you just start running it through, you just turn the crank and you hold. Oh my! And then when the needles fill up, you just pull it off and you just keep going until you get to the end. Now when you're smocking or uh, pleating a dress or something that's smocked all the way around the neck, a mm -hmm. little bit harder, a little bit trickier to pleat because you have to guide it so that it doesn't have any puckers in it mm -hmm. as you go. But um, it's, it, it's not a hard process by no means. I would imagine too that you would need to make absolutely sure that it was a, a straight line. Yes, that's why you use you line your edge of your fabric up with one of these grooves. And then just kind of watch it the whole time you're feeding. And just watch it and, and tug on it just slightly as you go and and get those threads in there. And like I oh, said, it doesn't take long at all. And then you're finished with the pleater. That's all you do with the pleater is put those guide threads in there. But you have to have that. Well, Years ago, they didn't have pleaters, uh -huh. and they did dots, and you smocked uh, dot to dot, Ooh, <laughs> or you yes. could pleat, you know, dot to dot, and mm -hmm. it was like a transfer, and, oh. and you could, uh, 
then those dots washed away once your garment was complete. Well, that's good. And that's a little bit tedious, <laughs> a little bit time you. consuming, and, and when you can, you know, do it by this, why would you want to do it that way? Well, machines are not always bad, are they? <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> and this is not a very expensive uh, tool mm -hmm. for your sewing room. Um, usually you can buy a pleater for 100 to 150 depending on which choice you make. Mm -hmm. So one along this line would mm -hmm. be? And it's going to last you for years. This one I think was right around 100 or 115. Uh -huh. um, and you've had it for 20 27 years? years, 28 years, something like that. Long time. Now, I'll um, tell you what, that's been worth the money then. Oh, it has. And I was paying at first to have things pleated. I would pay the store down there to pleat for me. Uh -huh. And I figured out real fast when I was paying 7 to $10 per garment to have things pleated mm -hmm. that I could pay for a pleater pretty quick. Yeah, a dozen you know. garments and you're, you paid for a pleater. Yeah. Wow. So. Plus the money that you saved on the classes mm -hmm. right. came along with that. So oh, there's the that. pleated fabric. Oh, that is something else. Now that's what you ended up with. It is. Um, and that one already has the lace attached. And you leave your pleating threads long enough that you can flatten this all back out again. Mm -hmm. And oh, then, I see what you're saying. Leave that long enough for it don't pull back out. So, yeah, so you don't pull your threads out. All right. And then you just go to your sewing machine. And I use uh, French laces or Swiss laces to uh, attach. And then you attach your lace along this line here. With the machine. With the machine, with, with just a little machine. rolled uh, stitch that'll mm -hmm. just roll it up real nice on the back so uh -huh. that you don't see a lot of... Uh, of uh, fraying or anything so right. it's really oh, a yeah. tiny seam right there uh -huh. and uh, once you attach the lace then you're going to want to make the seams uh, for the sides of the bonnet mm -hmm. just hem the sides of the bonnet with a narrow hem and also at the back of the bonnet you need to make a casing wide enough for a one and a quarter inch ribbon to go through okay and, and that's where you would end up tying and that's it. where you tie okay. the bonnet at the end when you're finished. And this is at the back of the baby's head. Oh. And then you've got this ribbon here. As the baby grows, you can let it out just a little Shoot. and get a little bit of grow room out of it. So we don't really need to have a baby's head there to, because it'll grow with the baby. If you're making it, uh, the instructions here have different sizes it, to cut your fabric mm -hmm. to do it. But if you have a particular baby that you want to make sure it's going to fit exactly you can measure from earlobe to earlobe across the top of the head and that will uh, ensure that it's uh, going to fit okay okay i didn't know that either from so, earlobe to earlobe mm -hmm. that's a nice so rule that, of thumb also that kind of tells you how far up to draw it and mm -hmm. tie it off because see this has been tied off so mm -hmm. that we can cut some of those long threads away and get them out of the way for sewing or okay okay all right so the first step is the pleating. Mm -hmm. That I love that pleater. That's just fun. That's handy, isn't it? That is. It's very handy. All right. Um, so then your next step then, like you said, was to sew it together. Mm -hmm. Sew the laces on. And um, you just do you prefer this lace? You say you have a certain would this That's be a French kind of, lace. Okay. And you just prefer this one. Now would this be good for boys and girls? It doesn't no. really matter, does it? You, would you I, want something plain for I boys? would want something. I I normally don't make this type of bonnet for a boy. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't put any lace on a bonnet uh, myself for mm -hmm. a boy. Um, I would just hem with a little tiny eighth inch hem okay. on the machine okay. and, and do it that way. Or, or mm -hmm. there's other bonnet patterns that would probably be more appropriate okay. more for a little boy. More appropriate? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So oh. the next step would just be to start doing some smocking stitches. All right. Are you going to show us how to do that? I sure will. Great. Chosen a, a bright pink thread today. To, Beautiful. Um, so it maybe will show up. I'm using two strands of floss. Usually on a lightweight ma fabric like this, you'll mm -hmm. want to use either two or three strands. Oh, really? Of DMC embroidery floss. That's just regular cross-stitch floss like okay. people used to cross stitch or or anything. DMC is that DMC the brand or brand the name okay. all right so that's the brand name and now these I, I well you can get these locally sometimes so, I don't know if yeah. you can get this brand but uh, usually good, good. usually good 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 all right so you use two or three strands mm -hmm. through your needle you do all right and uh, you just separate those strands just pull them out one at a time and then mm -hmm. put them back together and on your thread, you always knot the end that you cut. Okay. That's just... Um, that you cut. All yeah, right. Yeah, and um, a friend of mine at work, Tammy, she showed me a great way to 
to tie a knot on a needle I'd never seen before. She's a quilter. And you just hold your needle and you wrap the thread around twice mm -hmm. and just hold it good and tight and pull the needle all the way through and you've got a nice neat little oh, knot at the end. Do that again please. <laughs> Let I me want snip to that, that off. Again. Make sure I've got that. You just hold the needle. Okay. And get the end of the thread. All right. And hold it down with the needle. Mm -hmm. and wrap it around twice. Or a bit more if you want yeah. a bigger knot. Mm -hmm. If you've got a you and know, then pull it through. And you just How pull it through. Smart. Isn't that neat? I love that when she showed me. Oh, that. that's neat. I love tips like that. Yeah, they are it's a so good fun. little tip. Mm -hmm. so, All right. Uh, you always smock left to right. Okay. The first stitch that we're going to do is a cable stitch. Mm -hmm. And that is the rule of thumb. You always do left uh, to right. Left to right. Okay. And uh, I've never taught anybody that's left handed, so I'm not sure how that would go. But. Um, Probably disastrously. It <laughs> would for me. I don't know about them. <laughs> uh, the first row in your is your pleating row is mm -hmm. your holding row. You never smock on the first or the last row. Those are just to to get get you going. Okay. okay. So you're not going to smock on the first row, mm -hmm. and you always come up on the left side of the pleat. Okay. So you have actually skipped the first row. I have. All right. I've skipped the first row, and I'm coming up on the left side of the pleat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, your needle goes in the next pleat on the right side mm -hmm. and comes out on the left side of the pleat. And you want to be just above that holding thread, mm -hmm. that pleating thread. You okay. don't want to get into that because then you're going to have trouble pulling that pleating thread out when you complete the bonnet. I see what bonnet. you're saying. Yeah, because we have to get rid of this, don't we? Right. That, right. that goes away after you get all your smocking done. And then you just pull it up. It's, it's important to learn how to, to get your tension correct. You want mm -hmm. your tension to be the same on each Turn stitch out. so that all your stitches are uniform. Mm -hmm. So I had, um, this time I want the thread to be above my needle. And so I'm going to just go into the next pleat here mm -hmm. and pull it all the way through. Now how do you know what pleats to go into? Are you just you going go into pleat every to pleat, pleat to pleat? Yes, okay. all the way across. All on right. that row you would go all the way across. And this time it's just the thread's below the needle okay. on a cable. It's oh, below and then up okay. and below and then up. So, so you have to, I assume it's hard if anybody's talking to you to keep up with what's going on. No, it's not. It's a lot easier really than some other crafts because you, uh, well actually I make up a lot of my designs mm -hmm. and so I can watch TV, I can sit and talk to you all day and smock. Wow. And, uh, so, but, I guess you just have the thread above and below all the way across to do now a cable stitch. Now can you tell uh, by looking if it's above or below? You can. Okay. And if you make a mistake, it's no big deal. Just unthread the needle, go to the back side and pull it out mm -hmm. and rethread mm -hmm. your needle and come back up on the left side of that pleat and mm -hmm. just start over. All right. Or if you're getting a big mess, you can always, you know, tie it off the <laughs> back and start over Easy from there. Easy for you to say, right? <laughs> Goodness gracious. But just now how many pleats do you figure is in? in this bonnet? Hmm, I don't know. I've never, I have no idea. I'm sorry. It's a bunch. That's all right. I just wondered because that is a lot of pleats. Yeah, it is. Uh, and of course on garments, um, you you have to find the center pleat on mm -hmm. some designs mm -hmm. so that you know that your design is going to be centered on the front of the dress like mm -hmm. you want it to be. Is this a good example? And, uh, it is. You, you have to mark your center pleat and mm -hmm. know, know where it's at. Mm -hmm. How do you go about go, marking it? I use a water-soluble blue pen okay. that just washes out when I'm finished. And, wow. Uh, so this has a, a variation of different uh, stitches. It starts with a cable stitch, and then the, the next stitch, this green vine that goes across here, is an outline stitch. And that one, the thread just stays above the needle all the time and you work from one row to the next. And I do like five stitches on the bottom row and then divide the space between that row and the row above it mm -hmm. into seven, just with your eyes, seven increments. So you have seven equal stitches going all the way up with thread above the needle and then you do five stitches across just running a straight line mm -hmm. and it gives it this wave effect as it goes along. Oh, that is beautiful. And then the little pink flowers on this one um, are French knots. Very simple. Uh, you just, we'll, we'll make one in just a minute. I was going to tell you, I, um, in crocheting, I run into the French knots and for the life of me, I can never get a uniform French knot going. So I'll be interested to see the French knot. 
Well, okay, they're, they're very simple. Um, to make a French knot, the size of the knot should be determined by how many threads you use. Okay. Some people think that the size of the knot should be determined by how many times you wrap the needle. That's what I always thought. But no, if you want a bigger French knot, use more thread. That makes sense and, now. Yeah. Um, let me go down here and then I'll, I'll show you how to make a French knot. You just come up wherever you want that knot to be. Mm -hmm. From the back side. From the back side. All right. And you wrap it once. That's all. So with these two strands that we're using, we're going to have a relatively small French knot. But um, you know, like I said, for years I thought that it, you know, if I wanted a big knot, I needed to make more wraps, that's and that's I, not the case. I want you to look at but that. But it just makes a perfect little knot. And um, so if you want, a, if you need a bigger knot, just mm -hmm. you know, use more you can thread. use all six strands of thread if you need a great big one, or if you need more than that, you can now always add more that thread. Something. So, but there's a lot of French knots on these little gowns, mm -hmm. and, uh, but and they they're so very cute. fun to make, I think. Very relaxing. Mm -hmm. That's therapy. <laughs> yes, very much so. Wow, so. who knew? Yeah, I had been way overthinking the French knots then for years. Really? I don't have a French knot I would show anybody. I'm not proud of any oh. of them, so now I know. <laughs> now, now you know, just, just, a, just with the thread. Um, oh, neat. But there's the outline stitch. We'll do a few of those if you want. Okay. Um, I'm going to come up again on the left side of the pleat. Mm -hmm. I'm getting tangled up here. And um, go to the next pleat and you just keep the thread above the needle. And then we're going to go up seven. So I'm going to just take seven tiny little steps to get up to the next pleating row. Well, this is just going to make a little trellis or a wave, I guess. Um, I call it a vine. Mm -hmm. To uh, it makes a good good place to put pretty little flowers. You can put the French knots there, or you can put bouillon roses, um, that kind of thing. Oh, wow! And, that and so for every one of these, you're keeping the thread above the needle. I'm keeping the thread above the needle, and I've lost count. <laughs> I was running my mouth. I lost count. <laughs> well. Improvise here, and then just go up to the next row. And I know I've got too many stitches there, but then over five, and you stay on that row. Okay. And I'm still just going in the next pleat on the right side. So for every stitch that you make, you go into the next pleat, mm -hmm. regardless of where. You do. Oh, that is incredible. So now you're just going to go over five, five and then go back down. Go back down seven. Oh, that's going to be so cute. And it just eventually will look like a vine. It takes a little while, but. Oh, my. Uh, it does. Now, any particular needles or anything like that that we need, just a, a sewing needle or? Well, I like to use a number seven mm -hmm. sharp. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, I, it's just really preference, whatever yeah. you like to sew with. You do need a sharp needle, though. Mm -hmm. And um, this one is a, a darning needle that I'm using right now. I think that's what the instructions call for is like a darning needle. But it's, it's got a bigger eye mm -hmm. for if you're using a lot of thread. Um, yeah. Okay. Depends yeah, on how so many can strands. Through there. You've got to have something that your thread will go through. But I do, I prefer a sharp needle. Oh yeah, and, uh, definitely. Some, some people like little ones, you know, little short needles, but... I like something I can see and feel. I like a big meaty needle. <laughs> All right, how do you go about getting the ribbon in? Can you show us a little bit of that? Sure, I can. Look at that. That is adorable. Hold that up and show that. That is just adorable. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fun. When you uh, finish your smocking and take out your pleating threads and I always mm -hmm. press along here to get out any wrinkles. So I'd have to find my iron. Have to find your iron. You're going to have to have an iron <laughs> if you're going to smog. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> well, I guess I can cave in this one. <laughs> but I always, this is a 5 8 inch ribbon. Okay. This one is not double faced. I didn't have any on hand, but mm -hmm. I like double faced satin better for the ties mm -hmm. on the bonnet. That's a, the, both sides both are? Both sides are satin. See, okay. this one's kind of, uh, matte finish instead of satin. Okay. 
So, so again, that'd be preference, I guess. Yeah. I'm like you, though. I like the satin on both yeah, sides. Yeah, it's just faced. a little bit softer for baby mm -hmm. to wear. So sweet. But I just fold it under once, uh, about a quarter of an inch, and, and then maybe three quarters of an inch. And uh, I just try to make sure that I do both ends the same. Mm -hmm. So it's whatever looks good to you. And then you just put it on your bonnet mm -hmm. and then I sew by machine across mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. to, and tack it down real good so it's not going to pull off when you're tying the bonnet on the baby. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's pretty to do a little embroidery and put some flowers or something oh, right there. Yeah. Um, I can see that. It's more of those good French knots. Mm -hmm. Some more of those good Don't French, French knots knot or bouillon everything. rose. Or <laughs> <laughs> lots of options there. So that's how you get your, your tie on. And mm -hmm. then you use a quarter inch ribbon to run through the casing to make the back of the bonnet. And mm -hmm. I use, you can use a safety pin to pull it through the casing or I have this little tool that you, it's handy. I've had That's it for nice. years. I'm not sure what it's called, but you just put your ribbon in there and. Isn't that something? I was gonna show a finished garment. That's how you've sewed that on. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then you actually run your ribbon just through there. Take to this it. and just push it through and pull the ribbon through there. Uh, and then this and is what you end up with, a mm -hmm. beautiful smocked mm -hmm. baby bonnet. Wow, thank you so much for coming today. This has been so interesting. Well, thank you. I am really excited about this. I'm, I'm going to talk to you some more about this and see what we can come up with. This is absolutely beautiful. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Well, unfortunately, that's our show for today. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us at HandmadeTennessee at BLTV.net or like us on Facebook at Handmade Tennessee. Thanks to our very special guest, Patty Boyd. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. I'm Kimberly Vance, and I hope that you've been inspired to create your own Handmade Tennessee. If you enjoyed today's show, check us out on Facebook for other shows and information at www.facebook.com slash Handmade Tennessee. You can also email us your comments or suggestions to handmadetn at bltv.net.